Buongiorno everybody and hello from beautiful sunny Sicily. If you know me, you know that Sicily is probably one of my favorite places in the whole world. And it's a place I've spent a lot of my life studying the culture, getting to know the art, the history. And it's just a fascinating place. No matter what you do here, you're never going to run out of interesting food, interesting experiences, beautiful art and architecture. Almost 4,000 years of human history here in one island. And also they have beaches, they have islands, they have volcanoes, so a little bit of everything. So we're gonna be doing a wonderful little journey through Sicily here through videos and posts on my Facebook page. So I hope you'll enjoy the next little bit more than two, and a, two weeks, two and a half weeks of a journey through Sicily with me on tour. Don't forget that you can always take a tour with me as well. I offer tours through Sicily at least twice a year. So let's go check out the town of Palermo today. Ammunini, that's Andiamo in Sicilian. So for a person who lives in Seattle, I can tell you the thing I love the most about being in Sicily is the thing behind me, and that is the sun. We actually have the sun here, and Sicily is sunny, oh, almost all year round. That's one of the reasons it's a fantastic tourist destination, but I like it in the spring and the fall. I'm here in March this year, March and April, leading up to Easter, and Easter is so much fun here. They have lots of processions because this used to be a Spanish territory. It was ruled by the Spaniards, and they, of course, are very well known for these incredible Easter processions. I'm hoping we'll get to see one of those uh, during this trip as I document it as we go along. You never know. So behind me you see the famous Fountain of Shame, Fontana della Vergogna, which is well known here as a shameful fountain, not because it's not beautiful, it is, it's a Renaissance masterpiece, but it's a shame because look at all the naked people who were put in right underneath the gaze of cloistered nuns. These windows up here would have been windows that the nuns could have seen the fountain through. And of course they were scandalized when a Tuscan marble fountain was put in showing a little too much skin. The legend is that the nuns were so horrified that they came and they removed the offending parts. Was that true? I'm not sure about that. It sounds like a tour guide story to me. But what we do know is that this is not really something that's typical of Sicily to have this style of fountain. Uh, but now it's sort of a, a town landmark and rather than a bit of shame, it's something that's a point of pride for the city. So from the Fountain of Shame on the opposite side here, we have the City Hall of the City of Palermo. This is actually going under restoration for a few years, so that might be the last time you see the facade like this or are able to go in the interior, but this is where they make a lot of the rules and we have the, the Mayor Palermo inside. And then we have Santa Catarina, which is the uh, former convent, which has been closed since about 2015. They moved the last nuns out and now it's functioning mostly as a museum. And in front of us is the Chiesa della Martorana, and that is a church with a beautiful mosaic interior that I'll give you a little peek of. Uh, Byzantine mosaics are just a, a wonderful part of visiting Palermo because you get to see some of the finest ones in the whole world, even if it was a style that comes from the Far East, from Istanbul. It survives here in Palermo better than just about anything. If there's a word that I could use to describe Sicily, just in one word, I would say this one, multiculturalism. This island is placed right in the center of the Mediterranean. You have Africa quite close, the tip of Italy quite close, but then you also have Spain. You have all the travelers throughout time that have passed through the Mediterranean Sea and eventually stopped on this island. We've had dominations from so many different cultures here. The Spanish, of course, which you probably know about, but also the Arabs, the Normans, the Normans from France, as you might know. Uh, so many, many different cultures that came here to combine and fuse into this very interesting culture. This building really, really illustrates that. This is what they call Arab Norman style, something completely unique to Sicily and particularly beautiful here in Palermo. Uh, this was built in 1160. 
so a thousand years old almost, uh, and it was built during the Norman domination. So the Normans come down from France, they dominate southern Italy, and they become the kings of Sicily down here. And at the time when they arrived, they also found the Arabs who had been living here for a couple hundred years. The Arabs brought, of course, as you can see, Islamic style with them. This looks more like a mosque than a church, but that's because it was a part of that tradition. So instead of the Normans kicking all the Arabs out of Sicily, they kept them and they used them as master craftsmen to build a lot of their great buildings, such as Monreale. So here you have Arab craftsmen who are working to make a Norman church. It's never been used as a mosque. So you have that blend of East and West style, and that's what makes Sicily so incredibly rich and fascinating. So now we are in one of the most richly decorated churches in all of Palermo. This is the church of Santa Caterina. This is right in the heart of town, right next to the Fountain of Shame, Piazza Pretorio. And I love this church because it is so Sicilian. It is so, so decorated and so over the top. You can see behind me all of this inlaid marble, three-dimensional kind of bas-relief style marble mosaics. It's an absolutely insane sort of profusion of Sicilian style Baroque architecture. And Baroque work, of course, as you may know, is art that comes from the 16 and 1700s post-Reformation when the church was kind of trying to invite people back, I guess you could say. So what I love about this church is that it's all pink, as you can kind of see, dedicated to St. Catherine. But the reason it's such a profusion of decoration is because this was the church where you sent your spare daughters. If you had, let's say, eight children and you had seven girls and the oldest girl, she got married off, you'd have six girls left. Those girls then would have to be put somewhere and a lot of them, if they couldn't find a suitable marriage, were sent into convents. Now here in Palermo, if you had that problem, you needed to send those girls to a nice convent if you were a good family. So how do you do that? Well. Money moves everything, doesn't it? So a lot of these churches and convents here in Palermo were incredibly enriched by these wealthy families who wanted to make sure that their daughters lived a good life. So this church was a beneficiary of all the wealthy families sending their daughters into the convent. And once they went in, they never came out. Uh, these church walls are basically almost like a prison. They had to stay here the rest of their lives and they couldn't even come down to see their families. The only way they could see their families is from the galleries up above. I'll turn around, you can see these windows right here. They're screens and that's where the nuns could come and sit. And once a year, they could see their families from a distance. So not that great of a life. On the other hand, they were safe. If you were behind the walls of a convent, you didn't need to worry about a lot of the things the women outside of the convent walls had to worry about. Violence, um, childbirth, all the kinds of things that were uh, precarious events for women in their lives. This saved a lot of them from that harm. So it's a double-edged sword, I guess you could say. Look at all of that marble, absolutely incredible. Let me take you closer to the inlay. So it's sort of like a mosaic because there are all these different kinds of pieces of marble and some of it is flat, but you can see some of it is actually relief. And how did these, men, these nuns make a living? It was not just that they would bring in new women and get an, an endowment for every new woman. They also made sweets. So the tradition here at this church all the way up to 2015 was you could come to this little window and you could put in your request and you could see you can turn this little thing here and that little wooden box would turn to the nuns on the other side. You could speak right here into those holes. You could tell them what you wanted. A dozen cannoli please. And then the nun behind there would go get them. You'd put your money in and then the little uh, wheel would turn and out would pop your sweets. They still actually honor this tradition here, and they have a bakery that you can visit for free. The interior of the church, on the other hand, is a fee. At this time, it is two euros to enter, but well worth it. I actually kind of like when they charge a little bit of money because it keeps the crowds out. So this is what I was talking about. If you look up above, you can see those cages. So those cages were to obscure the nuns as they came back and forth from services so they couldn't be seen and up there, those caged windows as well. 
They could see, but they could not be seen. So the reason that you come here to Santa Catarina, other than the interesting story about the nuns, is this lovely marble inlay. You can see they're using different qualities of Sicilian granite, marble, all kinds of things that have colors that you can make flowers out of. And they incorporate that with some sculpture that is three-dimensional. Here we've got that beautiful inlay work. What's really extraordinary to me are these columns at the bottom. They each have wonderful panels that tell you a story that have this sculptural inlay combination work that is so unique uh, to this church. So let me show you my favorite panel. You probably know this story, Abraham and Isaac, the sacrifice of Abraham as he's about to sacrifice his son. The angel comes from above and stops him and grabs his hand. But this is not a painting. It's not a flat mosaic. It's actually almost like real life. Because look, that is an actual blade that is sticking out of the wall. So it almost feels like the action is going to come out and grab you. The Sicilians are anything if not operatic in everything that they do. So high drama. But this was really a common aspect of the Baroque as well as a combination of art and opera. But here's the one I like the best. This is a story you probably know, Jonah and the Whale. So down here, Jonah is fighting the whale, and up above, the seas are rough, and there's a ship that is about to be tossed off of the side of this column. And I know that this looks like it's flat, perhaps, from a video screen, but if I walk around it, you can see, look, from the side, that sticks way off of the column incredible and this is all done in different different qualities of marble look at the close up at the stone look at all the different kinds of stones that they use and then they use some real life objects like nails and wire to create the effect of the sails and the, all of the ropes the ladders look at that absolutely incredible marble work I think for people back in the Baroque era, 16, 1700s, if they had seen something like this, it would have been the same sensation as us seeing 3D television. Absolutely incredible. So each of these columns you can see has a different story and you could stay here and unravel each of them. Uh, and you should if you decide to come to Palermo. So that's all from me here in Palermo today. Please do join me every day. We're going to be exploring a different corner of Sicily. Uh, Palermo, you could be here, I would say, at least a week and never run out of things to do. But for the typical visitor, I would recommend at least two to three days. And that'll, that'll give you a taste. And then, of course, you'll want to come back. Sicily, as you know, is my passion. And I hope that through my videos and my writing, that it will invite you to come and explore one of, I think, Europe's most beautiful islands. Uh, 3,000, 4,000 years of human history, culture, art. It's waiting for you, and don't forget the granita. That's waiting for you, too. We'll see you again soon. Ciao!